Hey everyone, I am Dr. St. George, and today I'm going to show you a short clip from PAC-23 uh, about some of the management techniques when it comes to cardiac arrest. So, as we all know, airway management and cardiac arrest is challenging for a number of reasons, uh, particularly because we know that optimizing high-quality chest compressions uh, and having a high chest compression fraction is really important. So, we don't want to be interrupting CPR and chest compressions for airway management. So how do you go about doing that in the best way possible? And this clip has a lot of pearls. So I'm just going to start playing it and we're going to get started and I'll show you, uh, I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, let's get started and watch the video. Okay, so we're going to talk about airway management during cardiac arrest. There's ample evidence to show that there's no need to intubate a person during cardiac arrest. So your best initial approach to manage the airway is a superclot. So all right, so we'll just pause right there for a second because I think that's the, one of the most important points uh, starting this off is simply that you don't need to intubate a patient who's in cardiac arrest. A supraglottic airway is good, is good and there's evidence to show that at least in the initial stages of resuscitation that this is a great way to resuscitate your patient, to provide adequate enough oxygenation and to focus on high quality chest compressions without having to interrupt for intubation. So supraglottic airway is the way to go, and here uh, we're using an eye gel, and uh, let's watch her put it in. Our chest compression, then go ahead and place that. Excellent. And now we can ventilate the patient and concentrate on the things that are actually gonna help them recover from this cardiac arrest. Let's say we can't ventilate adequately or we're far enough into the arrest that we need to exchange for a super, for an endotracheal tube. So pull the supraglottic airway and let's have you intubate with chest compressions ongoing. The most important thing is maintaining chest compressions without interruption. So the ways we can maximize your chance of success are positioning the patient. So you can use the sheets to get the patient's head into a more ear to sternal notch position and then so we'll just pause there for just a second. Just remember that the sniffing position, that, earl, that uh, ear to sternal notch position is incredibly helpful whether or not you're using direct laryngoscopy or video laryngoscopy. Uh, and I want you to take note of the tools that she's using here. She's gonna use uh, a video laryngoscope, a McGrath blade with a bougie. And we'll talk about that on the other side. I will hold your bougie and your tracheal tube. Okay. You can take this video laryngoscope and we'll start chest compressions and you can go ahead and intubate the patient. So you can see she was able to get good visualization there. She had to twist a little to get the bougie past the glottic opening. I have a bougie. Railroading that tube over the bougie, inflating the cuff, okay. removing the bougie, connect to waveform and title, and we can ventilate the patient. And there you go. Good job. Thanks. Great. So, as you can see there, she used a number of important tools. She used a bougie which I think is great in this situation because it allows her uh, to just focus on getting tracheal access and not trying to get the tube in. Uh, and once she has the bougie uh, in the right place using a video laryngoscope, uh, then she's able to simply railroad the tube over there. And I think that, that probably took less than 30 seconds. Um, what's more important, which is the tool I haven't mentioned yet, is the actual mechanical CPR device that's ongoing here. Now, uh, it's been my experience, and I think it's a general experience, that when you're doing uh, hands-only CPR where you have people getting on and off the chest, they just don't have a perfect rhythm. They vary in depth and rate, <clears throat> and that makes it very, very hard to intubate your patient. What's beautiful about the mechanical CPR like the Lucas here is that it provides very clear, rhythmic, consistent CPR and it does it in a way that allows you to more effectively intubate the patient. So rather than saying, hey, hey, can you stop for just one second? I've almost got it, I've almost got it. And then that two or three or four seconds turns into 30 or 40 seconds to get the tube in place. You can see here that intubating the patient with the Lucas device ongoing was relatively easy for her. And so 
Probably one of the most important devices in this video is the mechanical CPR device, because what that does is it actually improves airway management, time to endotracheal tube placement, and improved chest compression fraction. All right, I thought there were a lot of great tips and pearls in this video. Go ahead and watch it again, just if, in case you missed a few. Then remember to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We really could use your, your support. Uh, and I'll see you on the other side of this video.